What's up guys, on this channel today I will be giving you an exclusive look at the iPhone 8 China Edition. Let's go ahead and unbox the latest creation from my friends over in China, their take on the iPhone 8 months in advance before it's even out. They've been doing this for a very long time and on this channel I'm sure you're familiar with it. We've got reviews of the SE 6, 6S, even the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus and most recently the Galaxy S8 Clone Editions and they, they're pretty good actually. I'd say one to one design wise it's the software that gives it away but in any case let's go ahead and see the Chinese version of the iPhone 8 and how it is. Alrighty guys, let's take a look at what these absolute madmen have done. They've released a phone based on a product Apple hasn't even released yet. Very, very curious how this one's going to work out with the new redesign and everything. Always packaged like they're smuggling something over the border, that's for sure. Let's go right in the middle here. Alrighty, here it is. Ooh. Nice, product red iPhone 8. And they even included a screen protector for a 4.7 inch iPhone. All right, a little pointless there. And here it is. Take a look at that, guys. Wow, I gotta give them props for the well-made packaging, that's for sure. It looks very, very good. The text is huh, pretty similar. It's using the new San Francisco font. They're really nailing down these little details that give away a fake iPhone. Wow, if you look closely, iPhone 8 in red, 128 gigabytes, designed by Apple in California. Even a model number that I don't believe belongs to anything. Current ones start with a 5, A15. And uh, oh man, this is where the details start faltering. Look at that. It's sideways a little bit. Apple would never do that and it's cut off. But iPhone 8, AirPods with remote and like, and mic, lightning to USB cable. Cool, cool. All right, so there is the red one. I gotta say, it looks very, very good. I like the packaging, they did well. Now I have another color here too I'm gonna unbox. Let's take a look at these. I believe there's a gold one in here and a silver, I think. All right, nice. There's the silver one. And it uh, doesn't have the product red. Very, very good attention to detail. I noticed that the text placement has changed when that logo's not in there. The color is uh, coordinated with the color of the device on the side, so. Very nice. They really need to fix the mistake with the misaligned text though. Okay, let's go ahead and unbox the red one just because I think it looks the best here. So hopefully the product inside has that same attention to detail. And here it is guys, the moment we have been waiting all nine months for, <laughs> the iPhone 8. Nice, they even copied Apple packaging now with this. This is the most well packaged device ever. Do they have Apple stickers? Please, please tell me. Nope, but hey, they do include something Apple doesn't, a SIM ejector tool. All right, here she is, guys. Something Apple would never do with a device without a home button is put a home button cutout on this protector, which I don't know why it needs one, but oh, everything just comes out here. So you have wired AirPods. They actually come with a lightning connector now. Dang, these guys are very crafty. And uh, stuff you shouldn't use, these adapters. Here's what we came for, or what I bought this for. The SK concept, not the Batman one from the Galaxy. And uh, the front looks a little funky. Let's see what's going on here. Let me peel this off. Very interesting. A uh, crazy difference from what we've heard before, uh, that it would be a full screen display. It would be going all around and up top. Nope, this one has a little cutout that looks like it's rounded corners, but if you look very closely, it's a lot like the Galaxy one without the rounded corners. So funky looking on the front, literally all they did was add a little bit of vinyl to the existing iPhone 7 design. The red color is a little weird. It's like glossy. It's definitely a different shade of red. It doesn't have the matte effect going on and it's a little more pinkish, orangish. Very interesting. The text on the back doesn't include the product red logo for whatever reason. And uh, as you can see, it's reflective in silver, just like the Apple logo. So little tiny details here that are different than the real thing. Camera lens, uh, probably a dud in there, but pretty tiny, especially compared to the one-to-one -one specs. It's a little bit elongated, different looking, but uh, they tried, I guess. Power button here and some sort of plastic around it. It's not as elongated as it should be. It's even smaller than the stock iPhone power button, which is uh, interesting. So little tiny design differences here. Not even one-to-one -one with the real thing size-wise, it's tinier front too. So let's go ahead and power it on and see what's lurking underneath the surface of this phone, which bastardized version of iOS. 
they got the splash screen right, but immediately it's apparent that the display just isn't there. So if you're trying to spoof somebody and sell this to them uh, under the guise of an iPhone 8, it's not gonna work. I mean, it's immediately apparent. And um, it is incredibly thin though for what it is. It's even thinner, I believe, than the official model, yeah. Wow, so they got that right. All right, and here it is. Press home to open. Oh yeah, I just realized this has no home button. Oh, it does though. So it's a capacitive home button underneath this little border chin area over here. So it's not actually on the screen, but I gotta say it looks pretty good. The display is pretty sharp actually. It's, uh, wow, pretty fluid I must say. Looks quite good. Unfortunately, it's not running a clone of iOS 11, which is what I was hoping it would. Um, no sort of shortcuts here. Basically, whoa, what's going on there? Some sort of glitch. It's got assistive touch on. Uh, let's go ahead and see what this thing is running. Pretty close, this, the font's a little bit off. 11.0.1, whoa, <laughs> that is so funny. Apple, uh, Apple seems to have updated iOS 11 without us even knowing it, before the real one is even out, interesting. 32 gigabytes, available 28 even, cool. So uh, pretty close here. It's got all the telltale signs, but I'm disappointed they didn't go and change all of the little things in iOS 11. They just made it seem like iOS 11. So uh, there's spotlights, nothing really going on here. Edit, oh, pretty close interface. So let's check out spotlight notifications. Mm, a little bit interesting. Control center, what do we have for control center? Is there no control center? You're kidding me. Oh, okay, there it is. So iOS 11 night shift, this is the iOS 10 one, but you do have the two pages, very, very good. Let's see if there's a sort of 3D touch control here. Oh, there is. So if you hold on an icon, you get the 3D touch interface. I don't think it works in the control center. Anyways, I'm not able to get it to work. That's weird. This doesn't actually change the brightness until you let go. So you don't really know where it's going until you let go. So a little flaw there for you guys. It's got the old icons which is a little bit weird to see. I've gotten so used to the iOS 11 ones. Safari is Chrome, of course. There's obviously no fingerprint sensor anywhere, not on the back, not on the front, but uh, for something so cheap, this is not bad. It's, it's not as slow and laggy as any other clones I've personally used. Let's go ahead and download Geekbench and Antutu and see what this thing is running. Listen to this, they put the old lock sound in the new iPhone 8. That hasn't been around forever. And there it is. Alrighty, so we got a score of 22,735, almost one fourth the score of an official iPhone 7. Ooh, I like how they put iPhone 8 in there, running Android 6.0, nice. Holy crap, this thing runs hot. Just wanna see, whoa, 104 degrees, 105. Oh my goodness, this thing is really, really hot. The Geekbench sure is pushing it to its limits here. 105 degrees in your hand. Jeez, I had no idea modern smartphones go this low. 1,184 multi-core score with a 379 single-core score. What in the world? How is this even possible to use a phone this slow? But this is the iPhone 7. So thank goodness finding solace in that 5,913 multi-core score. Amazing. Anyways, guys, that is ridiculously slow. So performance-wise, the UI is pretty responsive, I'd have to say, like, they nailed that part down. It looks good. I wish they copied the iOS 11 style, but let's go ahead and test out that vertical camera. There must be so many improvements. I mean, Apple has completely taken the camera and swapped it sideways. This must mean good things for the camera quality. Let's go ahead and test it out. They did scam you on one thing, though. You can't actually change the video quality or any of those. It's just a placeholder so 1080p 30 frames per second it is i guess guys i'm truly sure you're not ready for vertical lens camera video so try not to be too shaken right now but this is the next generation of video on its side so 1080p let's get a little stability test in here looks pretty decent i must say on this display that is because it's so low resolution i'm a little scared to see it on the computer lots of greenery day after July 4th. Thank goodness nothing caught fire. So, oh, guys, careful. Get a little bit of low light in here. Some guy, oh, damn, right on the camera. I guess it looks like a worm to them or something. It's a little bit longer now. The uh, close-up focus is pretty bad. Like, it takes forever to focus. It looks pretty shaky to me. 
Um, I think it is better quality than the iPhone 7 clone video. I mean, that one was just awful. All right, so let's try this camera out. Look at that resolution. Hey, little birdie. Try out the zoom. Look at those pixels. So, there it is, guys. Video for you. Let's get some slow-mo as well. And I kid you not, guys. This is the footage that spat back out at me after recording slow-mo in supposed 240 frames per second. Nice. Truly an awful camera on this thing. All right, boys. Last thing remains is to see is the vertical camera real or is it a dud? All righty, so let's go ahead and get in here. They do use the pentalobe screws. The past is any indication this thing should be very simple to take apart, even with that more advanced rounded display. Probably should turn it off before doing this. Whoa, what? There was like no struggle. It just pulled right off. Okay, so you've got a ribbon cable separating the display. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, unplug it. But that's crazy how simple that was to take apart. Unplug. And uh, what do we got? So, pretty slim battery in here. I'd be surprised if that was more than 2000 milliamps, probably about 1500 or so. You do have a pretty complex inside. I gotta say this is one of the most complex after the Galaxy S8s. The old ones were pretty basic. We can see that the camera is uh, right here, the sensor for it. That means the one on the bottom is absolutely a dud. And the very interesting thing is the flash seems to be a four LED flash. So they actually copied that. So there are four little mini LEDs in there. It's quite bright when I turned it on. We can see here the SIM card and this looks to be an SD card uh, expansion here. So pretty nice. Um, let's go ahead and test the speaker. I'm actually curious to see how that sounds, but it looks good. Actually machined aluminum here, as you can see in the back. So this is for sure plastic, just a little plastic layer there. All right. Oh man, that is pretty bad. That's terrible, it peaks. The music player though looks pretty similar to iOS's. So that's bad. Check out Siri on this thing. It's a really crappy version called Evi. I'm sure it's from the Play Store too. Terrible, terrible. I also wanted to share with you the wallpapers included with this. Surprisingly, they actually added a ton in here that Apple doesn't even have. So kind of strange to see a clone do something better than Apple does currently. Apple's choice of wallpapers are frankly disappointing. This doesn't have the back swipe either, which is a little infuriating. Design wise, not awful, very slim, good use of space on this thing. I like that they tried. Software could definitely use a big work over if they picked up the specs a little bit, made it a little bit faster, I think it would have been better. But overall, not bad. A quick look at the iPhone 8 China edition before it has even been released. So just wanted to say, uh, don't buy this thing unless you really want to burn through a hundred or so dollars. Uh, you can find them all over the internet already as they are for sale now. Just thought it was an interesting thing before the actual release. Of course, the real one, guys, is going to be so much better. It's gonna have a much more legit looking camera that will actually function, a glass back, wireless charging, very nice power button, possibly touch ID in there, a huge full screen display, the little sensor area up there and uh, it's gonna be awesome, guys. Much better than this. Don't think that this thing has anything to do with the real one. It is a clone. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, stay tuned for upcoming iPhone 8 updates. All right, peace.